uh, listening audience we have with us, Pastor. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, my name is um, Pastor Tommy Smith. I'm of Atlanta, Georgia, Pastor of the Way of God, Church of the Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. And um, you have a large following, not only a large following in the state of Georgia, but all over the world. People are, are listening to you, are watching you, are going on to your blogs and and um, your message that you've been sending out and preaching and talking about. And um, some of those topics and subjects that you, that you share and talk about on a regular basis, some of the subjects and top, topics that we talk about, talk about right here in the Twin Cities of champagne Urbana, especially on this radio station, as well as one of our other um, radio stations right here in town. And um, we've been dealing with the body of Christ. What's going on in the body of Christ? I'm not going to allow you to go ahead and share, man of God, some of the things that God has placed on your heart that you've been ministering over the years and been sharing um, for this end time. Go ahead and share with us, man of God. Well, first of all, what, what we try to do, um, and all honor, you know, goes to the Most High God, um, the Son, Jesus Christ, first of all. Um, what we try to um, offer the people is um, trying to get the people to open their eyes and minds and think freely and see what the purpose of the, 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 purpose of the Most High God and Him sending His Son to redeem our people from their sin and trying to get our people to understand their true identity opposed to the identity that's been afflicted upon us here in what we call America. Um, trying to um, get some transparency where people can truly see what the Word of God is saying opposed to people speculating and um, using not ideology but ideology, um, ideology and um, making fools out of the people and exposing the behavior of these preachers of today that are manipulating the people, having sex with the members, molesting the children, and, you know, taking money, just just um, running rampages on the people of God, um, you know, spiritually and mentally. Uh, so we're trying to, you know, illuminate the people and get them to a point of understanding that, you know, when it comes down to living right, there's no excuses. Uh, a way has been made, an uh, example has been set, and, you know, it's time for us to come up to the mark. And you're talking about sleeping with the members. We are there are shepherds that are sleeping, and it's nothing. But when we find that shepherds are sleeping with the sheep, um, that's changing. That's going against the laws. That's going against the the commandments. Going against the standards that God has set for the church. And um, and we're seeing the results. The results of this taking place. Of, of shepherds, instead of leading the flock, they're sleeping with the flock, and and what the consequences of that happening, Pastor? Well, the consequences of it is the fact that we have people that sit inside of the church and they look at the leaders, they look at the doctrine that's being I'm mean, imputed in the people, and they're looking at well, I mean the person that's teaching is not living any better, and they have the same standard. So you got that, you know, that um, specific group that's going to fall away. Or maybe sit there and become hypocrites. Then you have the other group that sit there that's damaged by the behaviors and they just totally give up. Uh, you know, and they begin to blame this, uh, this lifestyle on the Creator. Opposed to realize this is not what the Creator has established. This is why He sent His Son to try to show us an example and let us know that this is, this lifestyle is contrary to the commandments, to His laws, and to His statutes. So, you know, that's why, you know, it's an urgent cry and need. For, you know, true men of God to stand on the wall and be an example to the people and call the people from darkness to light, you know, from the power of Satan to the power of God. Amen. Now, you've gone on to even share about some of our media pastors that you that we see on a regular basis that um, that are in mega churches that have you know, we can't get caught up in numbers because a lot of times we think numbers means that um, that's the that's the. Um, that must be where God is calling me to be, or that must be the who is God calling me to be my pastor. Because we get so caught up in numbers and thinking numbers often means that that's that that means success, you know, yes, in the body of Christ. But sometimes it's, numbers can be very misleading, okay. um, because even in the mis the misled mis misled of numbers, the misleading of numbers, we get caught into the emotionalism, the excitement, the socialism part of it. But never, God is not in the midst of that. Jesus is never is not in the midst midst of that. We have everything going on in the church except Jesus, the winning of souls, and everything else that takes place. Share with us, man of God. Well, I totally agree with that. You know, even Jesus Himself testified. I'm in the seventh chapter of the Book of Matthew. 
how broad is the way and wide is the gate that leads to destruction, and many there be that go in there at. But straight is the gate and narrow is the way that lead to life, and few there be that even find it. You know, because we, you know, constantly keep our minds on trying to focus on trying to obtain, you know, so many tangible things, people kind of get, you know, sidetracked on, you know, the purpose of being saved. The man who we say we serve came and had absolutely nothing, but he had a desire to fulfill the will of God. And once people take on that aspect, then you get a better lifestyle from people today. But, you know, and like you said, when people look at the massive numbers that are in these um, buildings or in these um, these watering holes, basically what you have, because the lifestyle is almost animalistic that people are portraying and saying it is a godly lifestyle. Um, I, don't, I don't put so much emphasis on the large number. I put more emphasis on if you just look at the life that they live. A lot of times people say, well, I know the church is false when a preacher drives a nice car when they fly a jet. The jet, the cars, the building doesn't make them false. It's the doctrine that's being spewed from the mouth of these people. They have to look at these people as a well. And as he told them, you know, if the well is polluted, then, you know, if you intake it, you're taking in polluted water. You know, if the food is contaminated, then you're taking in and you're ingesting, that, you know, um, food that's damaging to your body and spiritually as well as naturally because eventually there's going to be a judgment and then you're going to have to face the consequences or you're going to go in to die your hell. And nobody's actually, you know, it's not, well, it's not a large number of preachers that are crying this message out to people to let them know whatever you have uh, behavior, there's always got to be a consequence. You know, whether it's a good behavior, your child's in school, they get all A's, there's going to be some type of a uh, rubber man of a uh, consequence. Are you going to reward them or give them something or allow them to do something? Or if your kids bring it home failing grades and they're being um, constantly being retained back, then there's got to be some type of severity. So we have to put the same option on the table. It's not our job to make the people live right, but we have to put the options on the table. That's prescribed from the curriculum of the book. And it's very few preachers that are crying this out to the people. Yeah, I don't hear that message as often. I don't hear that message as often about the consequences of sin. More so that we serve a loving God and then God is for, is, is ever, forever forgiving and gracious. And, and he, he's, he's a forgiving God. But the, God is also a God of righteousness and a God of judgment and a God of holiness. And we don't hear those messages like we used to 20, 30 years ago. The message of today is get it while you can, prosperity messages, to uplift and to, and to, to appeal to, your, to the eyes, um, the lust of the eyes. But we don't find that, that, that hunger anymore, that thirst anymore for righteousness. I agree. And you're going to even to share, um, talk about some of the pastors. Let's, let's go right into it. Let's, let's talk about some of the pastors who you, you go on to share and talk about. Um, I know one in particular. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I know one in particular you talk, that we've been, you've been seeing over in the media that we've been seeing time and time again and this situation. I've talked to other authors and people um, concerning Bishop Long, Bishop Eddie Long. Um, what have you seen and what is your take on Bishop Eddie Long? Well, if I could say first, and I have a policy about talking about other preachers and running them down. Okay. My policy is every time I get a chance, I would like to destroy them when they're destroying the people. So I did want to put my policy out there, my concerns. Um, um, Bishop Eddie Long, you know, who never deserves the title bishop, is nothing more than a child predator, you know, um, just a monster. And, you know, people might look at that's horrible how he's talking about a man of God. You know, the, the sad part is, these people will allow their children to sit in churches and allow preachers to molest them. Even if it's not your child, you're looking at there's other children that's in here that's being victimized, the same age or close to the age of my child. If you lived in a neighborhood, and this, this is the sad part, people, and, the, and these are predominantly people of color. Now, these people have become so educated, and don't realize that more educated become in this godforsaken place called America, they become actually dumber. Mm -hmm. They will look in, look up online to find out about schools before they move into a neighborhood. Look at the curriculum, look at, you know, how many test scores they're passing, whether they rank in the nation, you know, out of the state. They will look and look online to see how many child predators are in their neighborhood and will go and align themselves at a church and will think that they're safe when they know these people will come on and have no shame. And they will put their kids in risk. The, the vulnerability of their children, you know, the, the innocence of their children for the fact that I can congregate among people with their own businesses. I can pass cards. Maybe I can 
connect and find me a, a love partner or whatever. And at the same time, they victimize, they put their kids in this victimizing and compromising situation. I'm almost more angry with the parents than I am at these preachers, and they know that these people are vulnerable, and they sell them this hope, this pie in the sky, that God will give them something in exchange for them dumping money on a basket. When they're doing better, they got a better odds than just playing the lottery. You know, so he's one of many. T.D. Jakes, um, um, Cruffalo Dollar, uh, uh, Joe Osteen, uh, Frederick Price, Joyce Myers. You know, all these people, they have said Haggard, Haggard, all these people. They, 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 they just, it's pathetic at the amount of people these people are destroying every week, month to month, year to year. And these people can't get any hope. They can't talk with these preachers. They get these lousy letters in the mail thinking these people actually sat down and write letters to them and sign them. And these are rubber stuff. But anything so they can go and they can get in crowds and brag about my pastor flies a jet, my pastor drives a car, you ride the bus. You Amen. never even flown before. You know, what kind of sense does this make when your lifestyle is so contrary? Mm. I'm sorry if I seem passionate about it. I make no apologies for it, but it just angers me when people don't consider when all this is over, you're going to have to give an account for your lifestyle. You're carrying a book. And I use this illustration with my members. You know, you would be insulted if your child went to the math class and they were taught history and never were taught math. You would ask the teacher. You would go to the administrator. You would call for the school board to say, this person has left topic, have not stayed with the curriculum. My child is not being taught within this book. And yet you have a book and you haven't even been taught what it says. Mm. Every one of these different religions are proclaiming a God. And everyone would just almost argue that there's one. There's one way. But then you're going 150 million other ways, contrary to what he said. Everyone has an option or, or has a revelation of what he said. I tell my members this. You can take 2 plus 2 and it's 4. You can take it to any other country. The, the English, the pronunciation might be different, but I guarantee the equation is still 4. We have the only book that can save a man and a woman, but everywhere you go, you ain't got to go to, you can go to a different house next door, different community, different city, different state. Everybody got a different interpretation. That's right. And it's dangerous. Mm hmm. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Now, now, these pastors, the pastors that you mentioned, Pastor, um, share with us what you know about, um, you mentioned Bishop Jakes. Yes, sir. Go ahead and share about Bishop Jakes. Well, I mean, basically, when you even look at him, he had a video uh, somebody showed me from YouTube where he came and kind of, you know, he don't want to judge the situation. You know, and they come out and they defend these gentlemen. You know, and their teachings of, he came out to defend, you know, Eddie Long's position and saying how he had a bucket of blood and he needs some on his life. Yet these guys carry a title that the Bible that they teach from says the bishop must be blamed. Now, I'm an ordained elder, and I'm also the same qualification as bishop. The Bible teaches for my qualification, I have to be blameless, blameless, not blameful. Mm. If, I can't, oh, if I can't meet the qualification, why take the job? If you read the newspaper in your position, you're in there, it said required. Four-year master. You, hadn't even, you completed high school. Mm -hmm. Do you really look to achieve that job with your qualification when it clearly says required? Exactly. Well, this position that we carry says required, must be blameless. Don't even look at anything else. Must be blameless. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm sitting up here and I'm in scandals and selling drugs and sleeping with these members and telling lies, I don't qualify. Therefore, what kind of achievement am I actually going to get with the people? Why aren't people looking? Naturally, they understand that. They see that required. Well, there's no need of me even applying. No need even attempt to, to try to get the job. But when it comes down to the people of God and how serious we should be about this lifestyle and looking at when I die, after that, life is over for me. My next move from here is judgment. Mm -hmm. Now, what am I going to be a judge according to? According to his truth. His truth has been mandated, recorded in the book. Now, when this man goes through the book, I have not met these qualifications. Where am I going to spend eternity? Hmm. T.D. Jakes has also taught Jonathan and David, King David, uh, were borderline homosexual, as was Ruth and Naomi. What's the agenda behind me taking the Bible, T. 
teaching you that these people that we find to be patriarchs in the faith mm. and call these people borderline they were homosexual. I can't teach that without an agenda. Mm. I'm setting you up for something or get you ready to re- to accept something that I'm going to push across on you. And we should know this, and these things are questionable. If it does not say it in the history of the world, where did you get it from? The Bible teaches us that there's no scripture, of, no prophecy of any private interpretation. If the Most High God reveals something to me that's mandated in the book, it should be able to be seen and understood if taught. There's nothing to, to, to substantiate their teaching. You have Joe Osteen. He teaches these people, you know, he can't judge. But you judge every day in life. That's right. Every day, if you said a person ran a red light, how did you know that? Because mm-hmm. there's a law that says when that light is red, you're supposed to stop. Mm-hmm. That person just jaywalked. How do you know that? Because there's a law that teaches you when they're supposed to walk across the street. And yet you judge all the day. You see people on time on TV, the news that they did or committed certain crime, you say it's wrong. Why? Because there's a law that mandates that said this behavior is unacceptable. Well, it's recorded in God's word and it's an insult to him when people sit here and say, I can't judge. I can't say. But when you call these preachers to the carpet and say, This is what the Bible said about their behavior, you false for saying it. Well, guess what? You just judge. And it's not according to a law, it's according to your ideology. So, Pastor, you said the, if the leaders can get right, if the leaders get right, if the shepherds, and then yes, we sir. will find a lot of the ills that we find in the pews and, and, and in, the, in society, those can be shaped those can be changed. If, we are the, if the light has darkness, if what's supposed to be called light has darkness, then the message that is being preached can be, it can't be heard clear or loud. I, I, I totally agree with you. And, you know, the sad part is you have people, just like with the welfare system, um, which was not, you know, designed for people of color, but just using it for illustration, you know, was set up to help um, a certain race in America. Um, the Bible is set up to help all people. But just like with that system, people learn to use it and get over on it. Mm-hmm. And people have sat back and watched the church and saw, you know, the downfalls of the church and the hypocrisy of the church. They realized, I do better to come here. It's, it's nothing but a sex club. The same clothes that I had people to admit to me, they left nightclubs to go straight to the church. Mm. This is a sad mentality. Where alcohol, been drinking all night, so you reek with alcohol and with cigarettes, and you say, yeah, they take their shack up. They, you know, they take their adulterous marriage. They go in homosexual. There is no conviction in the church today. And so when you got a person that comes out and say, you're convicted, and they can ruin me down, and they love to because you hate somebody that identified to say, but it's in your Bible. It's out of context, but it's in your Bible. Mm. The man you're saying you're following did. Jesus never thought about it. I showed him in the Bible where he called them fools, where he came to these people constantly calling them hypocrites. I showed him where... Jesus took a whip and beat them out of the church. All of them that bought and sold in the, ch- in the church. You know what they say? Well, that was in that time. That was back it in was, that time. They, but you're doing the same thing now. They say, well, we're not selling sheep and doves. You're selling the word that people need to live. Those sheep and doves, they needed because they had nothing to offer for sacrifices. So you could not sacrifice nothing. You had to have something. They sold the people what they needed. Mm. And you let them know it's a den of thieves. Now you send the people tapes and CDs that you send a series. You need to get this so you can be safe. You need to get this to live right. You're doing the same thing, and you saw losing the thing. It's different. So the word of God is for sale. It's merchandise. It's, it's merchandise is coming more commercialized. The word of God is coming commercialized. The ministry, the body of Christ, not everyone, but th- there are those that are commercializing the word of God. To make a profit off of it so that they can ju- there's other things that takes place that comes along with that the benefits of that and people get caught up on the benefits so right. living, living a life of luxury rather than members are living a life of poverty and, and you know what you, you can look at the people today it, it, it's to a certain point to where when you say benefits it kind of brought something to my mind mm. you know you can look at jobs that are career you know, I teach my members about, you know, there are people that just got jobs, there are people that got careers. Careers kind of doing something you want, you 
kind of got an end to it. Yes. Some people work at a job, you just paycheck, just living, just doing. You really don't have no hope. You're not looking at achieving anything with the company. But to go on a company that's career, uh, something that you look to retire from, there are great jobs that you can do this with. But it will make no sense day one to walk in. <laughs> Having completed the application, you want to, you know, see if you can go ahead and get retirement and the 401k benefits that they offer at the end of the job if you complete a certain term. And, and these people are looking at, I want to go straight to heaven. You haven't been born again. You haven't repented. You haven't been baptized properly in his name. You haven't been taught in the Bible teaches. It's written in the prophets that they shall all be taught of God. And I condemn these people because if you don't know it, how can you say that you're going someplace that you can't possibly go without the information? Mm. You're looking to walk across the stage. Here you, here you are. You're going to start pre-K. <laughs> this ain't even school. You're starting pre-K. Mm. This ain't even kindergarten. And you want to see if you can go ahead and get your uh, your c- completion of diploma of 12 years. You can't be serious. Oh my. You cannot be serious. But this is the mind frame of the people. They're jumping straight from pre-K to graduation. Naturally, you would look at these people like a fool. Mm-hmm. Why aren't we looking at these people saying, it's not possible, you don't have the information. Well, why not? <laughs> you have, there are certain things that have to be met. There are certain things that have to be done. In life... You wouldn't get a mass of people to rise up and become angry because a pre-K student wanted to graduate. You said, hey, hey but this is not even an option. This yes. is foolishness. We won't even waste time. Why aren't we saying this foolishness that people are sitting in these churches and they haven't repented? Once God saved me, I'll stop. He does not save you while you're in the act of sin. Mm. You're in a state of contrariness. In order to be saved, to be delivered, you got to stop. If you take a, a lifeguard when they go out to try to save a person that's drowning, you're taught to never approach the person from the front. You approach from the back. If these people are continuing to fight, if they try to grab onto you, you take them down. This is the only way to get them to let you go. Now, if you drown, you feel, why is this person taking me down? i got to first get you to stop fighting me so I can help you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you might give a person a sharp hit to try to run them maybe uncut so you can bring them back. But you approach them from the back and, try to get, and pull them back. Mm-hmm. That's what you try, I'm trying to do to the people. It might seem like I'm killing them, but you're already dying. Pastor, I'm trying to get you to stop fighting so I can deliver you. Let me ask you a question because there used to be a time where pastors and even pastors over those pastors, leaders over those pastors, or the um, depending on their denomination and their... Um, I guess their bishops used to sit someone down, or a pastor used to sit um, one of their showship pastors, one of their leaders, or someone that is in leadership position, used to sit them down if Awkward. they were caught or involved or doing something that was hindering the church or the body of Christ or was... Um, in their personal lives, was becoming a, a situation that was needed to be shepherded, would needed to be dealt with, um, you know, to restore brethren, you know, those that are spiritual, to go and restore that brethren. Um, there used to be a time where pastors, and I'm sure there are pastors that are still doing this time, but it's not prevalent. It's not, you know, it's not widespread. Um, even in, even when it goes to the, the the leadership, when it comes to the leadership, the pastor himself. There used to be a time where pastors used to sit ministers or lead those in leadership positions. And is that still going on? Well, I mean, it should. I, I'm, I'm a person that believes that once a person um, has compromised the ministry by their lifestyle being contrary to what's written, set them down. There are certain actions that's committed by preachers. I don't believe they should ever be restored. When it comes to sleeping with members, um, dishonest works, uh, molestation, any of these positions, you never hold this position again. There has to be something that allows accountability for the preacher. We don't only just hold accountability on the people. There's accountability on us. The Bible teaches in First Timothy, the fifth chapter, and about verse 17, it said, the elders that rule well, let them be counted worthy, a double honor. Mm. Uh, especially those that labor in the gospel. He said, but them that sin, rebuke before all the others might feel. I got people that will come in and run their mouth, because I know they don't know any better. They have been go to your brother. First of all, he said, my brother, if your brother have an art against you, he said, my brother and my sister, and they are these, they, they, they hear the word of God and do it. First of all, you're not even doing the will of God, you commit adultery. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. When you talking about going to your brother, if you had, if I had a fault or a heart against you, say you walked across and you didn't speak and I felt like you had something against me, then I should come to you and deal with you as brothers because you might not even know what I'm talking about. I hadn't had something that's on your mind. But if you went and committed fornication or adultery, this is not something all I got with you. This is something the Bible contradicts. It contradicts the Bible. Now, when it comes down to preaching, he said, rebuke before all the others might feel. Mm-hmm. People have to know that there are strong uh, re- recourse on preachers. When we commit these acts, I expect better from men that carry this office. For me, if it comes down to a person, if I don't agree with decisions you make, I feel like they're not um, good decisions and you're holding these leadership positions, I sit you down. Regardless of how the people look at it, but God look at when you, we're, I'm holding one of the most powerful positions in the world. When you look at a preacher being a man of God, it's, it's a greater decision than the president. They can go to war as we did with Iraq, took down this country, killed a man, killed his son, and no weapons of mass destruction. Okay, so what? He made a decision. He made a bad decision. He thought it was right. I deal with something. If I'm wrong, I'll go to hell. Mm. If I'm wrong, you'll go to hell. That's right. This is serious. It is. So, when you're preaching and you're, 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 you're um, proclaiming the word of God, you got to make sure your lifestyle is right. Your decisions have to be sound. Because people are sitting here. People make decisions. I move if you speak. I'll do this. I'll stop. Because I believe that I'm hearing from the Most High God through your mouth. I believe in the words you're speaking to me are the words of him, exact from him, the way he would want it taught to me, that I can make it in. And if I'm wrong, I've got the blood of these people on my hand. If my minister that laid me did wrong, we got the blood of these people. If I sit here and harbor these men, I'm no better than a terrorist. Now, we, when we've seen what went on in the Catholics, over in the Catholic Church, you yeah. know, we frowned and said that, you know, the, those priests, you know, they need to be accountable, they need to be judged, you know, something needs to be done to help those children, to help those young men that was, you know, be falling to those situations that were vulnerable at those times, especially at their adolescent ages. But when it comes over to the African-American church, when we see this going on in the African-American church, then we quickly to throw the scripture out, judge, and that you be not judged, or we need to turn the other cheek, or, you know, pray for, pray for those individuals and move on. Or a lot of times those victims that have been victimized, we, we normally try to pull out, you know, their history and saying what they've done. You know, instead of those that the ones that victimize, you know those those victims. Um, why is that, Pastor Smith? Well, if I could, uh, first of all, the, the judge is not. And you're right; they use that a lot of times. They, they never finish reading it. He never told them not to judge. They always go. That's the seventh chapter, Matthew. Mm-hmm. Judge is not to be judged. He said, first, get the beam out of your eye. That you said, please, to get the, the more out of your brother's eye. The beam being larger. He gave them the instructions on first what to do if you're going to put yourself in a judging state. Clean yourself up first, then you deal with somebody else. The other statement of turning the other cheek. Well, this act has already been committed. That's how those little boys got molested in the church. They've been turning cheeks and possibly boys might even be pregnant. Who even knows this thing? Mm-hmm. But getting to the point of, it, it, it's just a mess today. If you look at it, the Catholic Church is still here in America. They started from England. These churches, the reason why you had them commend the uh, fornication, adultery acts with these preachers and members is because they are, they are stemmed from the Catholic Church. The Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, non-denomination, all these churches are break-offs from the Catholic Church. All these churches still have the same doctrine, so it's only going to be natural that you're going to commit the same behaviors. They even look at sometimes when you got kids that grow up in their own drugs, what they always do, look back, is their father in the home? Was the mother using drugs? The community. They're always going to reflect back to that, aren't they? Yes. Then look at these churches. Where did they break off from? They broke off from from fathers that commit adultery and that sleep with kids and told lies they couldn't get married, but they could sleep with little boys. Told women they couldn't get married, but they could, you know, from the women. So these churches are just break offs. You got to get back to the root of the matter. You know, they teach you this psychologically all the time. Let's go back and look at your childhood. Let's go back and look at where these churches originated from. They all are break offs from. The Catholic Church, that's how they came with Sunday worship. That's how they came up with the turn the other cheek mentality of not judging because the slave master, that's what he taught them when he did what he did in the field. That's why they're so susceptible to anything they see that's committed by the Caucasian nation and never, and they're so dominant and destructive on anything they see on the black church mm. because they've been taught 
when the slave master did anything, don't address it. That's that time. Mm. They always justify something on that time. You know, that's how people, you didn't need that time when a lot of teachers wrong to hang or, or script or beat a man. You ought, it ought to already be in your heart. Something naturally you should allow, you know, this is wrong. Just like with the word. There are things the Bible teaches us, even in 1 Corinthians, the 14th, 11th chapter. Paul said, does not nature teach you that if a man has long hair, it's a shame to him? Mm. This lets you know. You don't need a Bible to tell you everything. Mm -hmm. I need a Bible to tell me it's wrong for a man to sleep with a, with a child. It's crazy. He told you nature teach you that certain looks, certain behaviors are more feminine. Yes. Nat nature is a natural course of a thing. So a lot of these things you've got to get back to the root of the matter. These churches are nothing but break-offs from the Catholic Church. They have the same behavior. They left with the same doctrine. Nothing's changed. So you're not going to get a different behavior. And we haven't even touched on, which is a major th major part of this, is the wives. The wives yeah. that have, and the wives and the children that are being affected, that are yeah. living in the same household. When they When this is happening, not only to the to the man, but how it affects the woman, how That's it affects correct. the mate and the children, how they're damaged and the things that they have to uh, endure as they go through the situation. Um, a lot of times they try to take the, um, they don't want to, to be talked to or they try to, you know, I know they're praying for their husbands and praying for, you know, the situation, but a lot of times they, they need that support too as well, Pastor. I, and I, I agree that, that, you know, the family, and I look at who's the victim a lot of times in these situations, you know, some wives, I say some, but all of the kids, when you look at the children, of the, you know, these pastors, these so-called, you know, quote-unquote pastors, but I say some wives because a lot of these wives are already alert, they already are conscious of what, the you know, the husband doing. Oh my. You know your mate. They know. And so I, 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 I preached a message one time and I called out to women that are, uh, in these churches that know that their husbands are cheating, lying, drinking, on drugs. You know, I, I called out to them. I told them that you are the problem because these people turn and they look and say, well, it must not be true because she's still with them. It must not be true because she, you know, seemed to have this aura with her and how they kind of conduct themselves. And all this stuff is just an illusion. There are so many pastors that don't even sleep with their wives. Their pastors and wives have open relationships. Hey, you sleep with who you sleep with, I sleep with who Just don't let it get out and we wind up getting a mess, you know, with it, you know, and it becomes public. Mm -hmm. This happens all the time. And I let them know that you're going to give an account for this. From my wife to anybody, you can't sit here. You can't support it. You know it's wrong and you stay. I told them you're just as damaging because there are people that watch. You're going to watch the past, the king, the past, the wife. You're going to watch the past. You're trying to find where's the loop, where's the breakage, where there's change, where you can see where there's contradiction. And these people learn this and they stay there. They know. The only reason why a lot of these women stay here because they get a salary. A lot of these churches pay the wife a salary along with the pastors now. So she doesn't look at I'm not going to mess up the money. He get money. I get I could break up, make a mess. I'm going to lose money. I got to go to work. I'm not going to do it. So they stay there. They put this image of support. And it's the same thing we got from the slave master. His wife knew that he was sleeping with the, with the Negro woman in the shanty. But she stayed there because she didn't have time to try to go nowhere and try to get her own place. So she stayed there. Now, our women have taken on the same mentality. Nothing happened. Get back to the root of the matter. It still revolves from the slave master. Mm. And again, we're talking to Pastor Smith. Pastor Smith, where are you from again? Um, Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. And the, your church? Um, the Way of God, Church of the Lord Jesus. And if pastors or people wanted to get a hold of you or any of your information or literature, how would they be able to get a hold of that information? They can go to our website, um, www.thewayofgodchurch.com. That's the Way of God. Church.com. They can watch us live three times a week on our website. Yes. All of our previous sermons. We have a for your information page, FYI page, just, you know, showing them different things that's going on to keep people conscious, alert, what's going on around them. Um, we're trying to teach people who they are, their identity, and the main thing, come out of the sin business, get your life right, and get saved and live holy. Amen. Pastor, we do have a massive wave of people that are listening to us online, my manager just, my station manager just shared with me. Um, we have quite a bit of people that are listening all over the world, listening to us live. And we looked at the, he looked at the, the account 
and it, and it's a massive uh, it's abundant of people that are listening to this show at this present moment. Listen to you as you share your, the information and in, in, in sharing with us right here in the city of Champaign Urbana in the state of Illinois what's going on and what God has placed on your heart and what you're preaching on and teaching on. Um, where, where do we go from here, Pastor Smith? Well, I think from here it's time for people to sit down and let's evaluate ourselves and look at, you know, why is it that we think so less about ourselves that we allow ourselves to fit in the situation and we become compromised? Why is it that we, we allow people to disrespect us to a point of they make fools out of us? And when we sit down and look at these questions and be honest with ourselves, then we get up and we got to make a change. The change started with each and every one of us individually making a change, and then it becomes, you know, again, collectively. And we, we start to see a better a better future. You know, I look at it, everybody that's in my neighborhood doesn't make a change. If I do, then that's one example in my community, one example in my home. What I do in my home is going to eventually, it's going to radiate to my children. My children are going to society. It's going to radiate and it's going to affect other people who I'll never see or come into contact with. And you look for them to reflect what they see from here and make a change and make an impact on somebody else. And that's the mind we got to have a step opposed to when nobody else is doing it. Nobody else is saying, why well, worry about it. I could have been stopped the crusade that I'm on now. But I know as I sat there in those churches when I was victimized, that's why I have such an urgent cry. When I was victimized, I looked at why isn't anybody saying anything about it? Why is it when these guys are messing up everything, let's pray. They always, my former pastor would say, keep your mouth closed before you go to hell. And that would scare me. I said, well, maybe I'm wrong for thinking this person's wrong for doing what they were doing. And it is wrong. They put this, invoke this fear on you not to speak. Set, be quiet. You don't know. That's God's man regardless. If God is keeping people on payroll that are doing these acts, is this the company I really want to work for? Mm. I don't believe in child pornography, but I'm going to go work for a company that sells child pornography. Mm. I know that this is not this man's company. We can read the book, the man's manual, the man's history about his company, how it was started to see. He never ordained, never went along with these behaviors. So why should I even believe it? So it's time to make a change. Accountability with these preachers. When you cut them off where it hurt, Hit them in the pocket. Don't support them. That's how you heard them. I tell them with the system, what they call the American Dream, I call the biggest nightmare the so-called Negro has ever seen in his life. Don't support it. Don't it support can't it. die if you don't. It can't live if you don't feed it. Amen. Amen. And amen. Pastor Smith, we thank you for joining us on this morning. Um, it's going on 11 in your time, 10 o'clock our time. We come to the end of our show. We want to thank you. We're going to invite you back again to share with us and to um, bring some more and to share with us more of what God has placed on your heart and what you're teaching. And um, I'm sure that the people of God are blessed on today, even looking at our numbers. But we don't get caught into the numbers. But we just if someone has been blessed on today, someone has been inspired, been motivated to move on, to make decision, make a decision, and to um, to be equipped to do what God has called you to do, then um, our prayers have been answered. Um, man, I've got last words. Well, I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity and chance to come and, you know, speak on the station. I certainly applaud you for your efforts and what you're doing as well. And, you know, definitely bottom line, it looks like a hate message, but we definitely love the people out there. What a save or stand center. You know, it just want the people to do the right thing. It's time for all of us to make a change. Amen. Until next time, God bless you, man of God. Bless you, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, you're listening to WFT it's on your 90.1 FM dial. We would like to let you know that the visitations are from 6 to 8 on Thursday. Funeral